All right, folks, so I said I was going to do it, and uh, I'm going to make every effort to do so. So basically what I've got here is I have base-coated the model with um, one of the older foundation paints. I believe it was um, Narlock Green. It's this one here. I'm not sure what it is in the new paint line, but um, it actually pairs up fairly um, accurately with, uh, with the newer one. I know I've got it here. It's Lauren Forest. That's the new GW foundation that um, <clears throat> pairs up with it very well, I believe. Anyway, so what I've done is I've base coated that and then I've put a Nuln Oil Black Wash or Bada Black or um, whichever one you have, whichever you, you use, the new or the old one. So it's either Nuln Oil or Bada Black. And then all that I do is I take a Goblin Green and um, and I just start painting on random shapes. Now I made the mistake before of painting circles and odd shaped circles and um, it ended up looking like bubbles. So I now what I what I try to do is I I start in an area like here for example and I just make an odd shape and then you fill it in a little bit with the goblin green. And I try to not put it in the center. I try to offset it a little bit. Um, unfortunately, I put it in the center there. But And then what I'll do is I pick another point, like here, for example, and I make another circle or another odd shape, trying to stay away from circles. And then you sort of connect these two by, by adding in more odd shapes. And what's going to happen here is you're going to create little spaces, little pockets in between them where you don't want the, the, the odd shapes, the circles, the scales to hit. So you can see here how I have an odd shape in between these two. It's called a dead space. That's what I call it. And um, I basically just put little dots in here to represent mini scales. I've taken this pattern from a lizard man shield. I just studied it a little bit, tried, I, I highly recommend if you are going to do this, try it on paper first, just grab a pencil and um, start making odd shapes and you're going to see how it ends up looking. And um, it's, it's, I don't know, it's better than wasting a model in my opinion. Waste a piece of paper, try it, practice it a few times and then go from there. I haven't watered this down enough and uh, so I'm getting a little, some streaks, but that's okay. I'll just uh, go back over it with some more watered down paint and um, we can kind of see how that takes effect. Now, I've already done a lot of the other ones, um, so I'm just going to sort of move on t for ease of, of um, this video itself. But what, what I'll do from that point, once I've got everything else on, I take uh, BL Tan Green and um, I do a fairly, um, th not thin wash, but I, I do spread it out quite a bit. So uh, what I will do here is I will just take my, my area that I'm working on and uh, I take a paintbrush with some BL tan and you can see how I'm, I put some on there and I'm just spreading that, that out. Um, I don't mop these particular areas, I just sort of spread it out. I don't know how many times I can say that. Fairly self-explanatory. Dum -dum. And um, I generally will do undersides like this. I might do a little bit of a heavier wash on it just because it is a shaded area. And I do highlight everything though. That's sort of against some of the rules I know on um, what to highlight and what not to highlight. But um, yeah, that's pretty much the, the stage of that. So it brings it from that stage to that stage. Now there's a little bit of shine there from the wash itself. But what's going to happen now is um, now I'm going to go through and highlight each one of the, the scales and I go basically I'm going to need to go the green, the goblin green again and then I do some goblin green with uh, warp, nope sorry, moot green. 
I go pretty much, sorry, I go Goblin Green, then Moot Green, and then I use um, a yellow. Lately I've been using some of this uh, Uriel Yellow. Now I don't know what it used to be. I think that's the old Bad Moon Yellow. Um, and then I do a Waywatcher Green Glaze. So you can see that there are fairly fair number of steps involved in doing these. Um, once I let that dry, I'll actually go through and do the the uh, highlight stage, but I sort of wanted to give you a heads up on what's going on. So we'll take it from there, and uh, once this dries, I'll do that next stage. <coughs> All right, so we move into the next stages here, and this is just the highlighting. So as I said before, um, I basically just go Goblin Green to Moot Green to Uriel Yellow. Now when I'm doing my highlight, highlight lines, I like to mix my paint a little bit thin. Um, I almost do a one-to-one -one ratio of uh, water to paint. Um, so for the first highlight line, basically what you want to do is get about, I don't know, about a quarter of the actual scale itself. And you have to remember where your light source is going to be coming from. So for me, my light source is coming this way. So my obviously my higher points up here are going to be where I'm actually doing the highlighting. So if I just go ahead and start this, basically I'm just looking at little lines like this. Um, the less strokes that you can put onto these, the better. You don't get any hesitation marks and... Um, Basically, it just looks a lot cleaner as well. You get a nice, even brush stroke. Sorry, my cats are distracting me a little bit here. So I'll just do a few of these so that they can dry before I move on to the next one. Typically speaking, I would do every single one of these scales um, in one shot for each color so I would do the goblin green then I would go over and do all of the moot green so on and so forth it's fairly typical um, you'll notice that I'm not doing any wet blending on this as well that would just make this task way too complicated and when we add our glaze at the very end um, it'll it'll blend it fairly nicely for us as well get a nice high contrast you'll notice too that I'm not doing a lot of the smaller scales and uh, the reason being is, is that the number of colors that we're putting into this, it basically, it, it, the green wouldn't show. So I only do one final um, sort of highlight with the yellow at the very end. So now moving into my moot green, which is my second color. So this basically, we're just going to go over half of the goblin green. Um, so if we did a quarter of the goblin green, we're basically doing a half of the moot green. And again, you want to try and make these as little brush strokes as possible. And by that I mean like one is ideal. Dun -dun. So as you can see, it's starting to, to highlight it a little bit n nicer now. You can see the edges a little clearer. And uh, this, this uh, it's a really nice effect. You can, I, I find that I'm when I'm painting models in the initial stages I get really kind of worried that it's not going to turn out the way that I want to and um, that's uh, I think that's the woe of pretty much every painter and then when the final product comes together it just looks nice this is why I do recommend painting a test model and that way you get an idea of of how everything is going to turn out dun dun you do notice too, uh, I know I, I get a lot of questions about people and they say, how can you paint so small and you, your hands must be the steadiest things ever. My hands shake. I don't know if you can see that or not, but my hands shake. It's all about confidence. It's confidence in your brush stroke. It's confidence in knowing where the paint is going. And uh, that's what it boils down to. That's just experience, many years of experience. I won't tell you how many, that dates me a little bit too much. So for my yellow, I don't water it down nearly as much. I like to have it uh, fairly, fairly consistent to the actual paint pot consistency, if that made any sense whatsoever. I like it just a little bit thicker than the actual green that I'm putting on here. And the reason being is, is I want that high contrast. Um, don't be afraid of how yellow that is going to turn out. 
uh, because when we put the glaze on, it will add green to that yellow. And um, it actually dulls it down just enough that it doesn't look so high contrast, so stark, uh, that it doesn't turn out well. But it will, trust me. Dun, dun. And this too is the stage where I'm going to put, with my smaller scales, just a little dot in here, like so. And it just uh, picks, and you can see how that wouldn't have worked very well if I had have done all my other greens. My cat's trying to drink out of my paint cleaning cup. She's a genius sometimes. So basically that's, uh, that's painting up a couple of scales. Let me see if I can get a closer look here. Yep, looks like I can, which is really nice. So you can see the different, uh, the different colors that are in there and how that, how that has happened. Um, my next step, really simple, is just to put a glaze onto that, and for that I use uh, Way Watcher Green. And um, you sort of just put it over the whole area of it, and it'll uh, make it pop. So I'll finish up the scales, and uh, highlighting all the scales in this area, and then I'll put the Way Watcher, and uh, I'll be back. Okay, so the scales have been all highlighted. Um, that whole process for that little section there probably took me uh, 10 to 15 minutes in its entirety. So you can see how, how what I was saying before that once the scales are in place, the rest is really easy to do. Um, so I'm going to move right in. I've let this dry and that's a really key point when you're putting on a glaze. I find that it has a different consistency than a wash than a paint well it's a glaze so it's going to um it has an additive called a glaze medium imagine that uh and basically when you put this on if there's wet paint it smears a lot so be careful and make sure that you get your uh area completely dry before adding your glaze to it now for the glazes itself you don't want to put well I find that you don't need to put a lot on. I've had this same bottle of this glaze since I started painting and I've done quite a bit. So as you can see it's fairly thin uh, coat that you put on here and you just go over the entire area. Sorry my hands getting in the way there I imagine. But it's uh, I, I really like glazes. I find what the properties of what a glaze will do is it actually makes your model pop a little bit more, it makes it look a little bit more crisp, um, and you don't have to worry about that dull factor that comes in. I don't know how else to explain that. I find that when you do highlighting, when you do dry brushing, everything to, to help your model out, it adds this dullness to it, and the glaze itself brings it back to life. So, there you have it. That's pretty much it. There's not much more to it. I'll let that glaze dry and then I'll move on to um, the next areas. Uh, after this, basically the only thing left for me to do is to do the metal parts, the lenses, and um, do my extreme highlights. If you all want to see any more um, detail work done on this Storm Raven, just post a link or not post a link, but post a comment and uh, let me know what else you'd like to see. I can't guarantee that by the time I get it, I haven't already done it, um, but I'm pretty much done for my painting today, so hopefully I can get your comments in time. Anyways, I am Alfarius, Transmission End.